667. 667. That is my number. What's your number? My number? My 667? It's greater than 847. In fact, my 667, it's greater than 79 million. And no, I haven't forgotten my grade school math. 847 is the number of music festivals that took place in North America just last year. 847. 79 million is the reported gross revenue of the Coachella Music Festival in California in 2013, which is the largest music festival in North America. But I submit to you today that my 667, my 667, is greater than both of those numbers. And that's because my 667 is the total number of sponsors, donors, volunteers, and organizers who work to make the Maha Music Festival right here in Omaha a reality. And it's because of those 667 people that Maha will be celebrating its seventh festival this August. My 667, they don't care what happens in 846 other communities across North America. And my 667, they don't care how much a music festival halfway across the country in California grosses. They care what happens right here in this community, in their community, in my community, and in your community. And I know what some of you are thinking. My number is 667. I didn't adjust it by one, but... <laughs> I did get a little nervous as I was counting those last few volunteers <laughs> giving a talk in which you say your number 666 would get kind of awkward. <laughs> um, the, the Maha story actually begins back in the spring of 2000. It was during an exercise that was part of Leadership Omaha in which the participants were asked, what's something that you can do to help make Omaha a better place? And to understand the conversation, you also have to know that back in the spring of 2000, there was a huge amount of community conversation and concern around brain drain. How young people, young people like many of you, were leaving. You were moving to the mountains or the beaches or bigger cities, but you were moving away. And to be a dynamic, engaging, appealing place, a community needs young people. We need you young people to stay. So with that as the backdrop, during this exercise, the suggestion was made, well, why doesn't Omaha create a music festival targeted towards young people? Because at its core, a music festival isn't about mountains or beaches or geography, but it's about placemaking. It requires coordination and planning. It requires a lot of money. But at its core, it's an event. And Omaha loves events. It's an event town. So that was the suggestion in the spring of 2000. And the idea sat. And it sat for quite a while. And then I got a call in 2008 from somebody who had been a part of that Leadership Omaha exercise. And this guy said, hey, we're trying to get some people together who might be interested in helping to start a music festival. Would you be interested in attending? I said, yeah, absolutely. I would love to come to that. So I went to that first meeting. And the only person I knew there was the guy who invited me. He was the only one. But he knew somebody, and then that guy knew somebody, and then she knew somebody. And every time we met, the circle got a little bit bigger. We weren't all friends. We're friends now, but we weren't all friends then. But we were still connected. We were connected by the idea and the belief that bringing a music festival to Omaha would be a fun and worthwhile thing to do. So as we were evaluating this, we would reach out to other people for feedback. And we would get some positive feedback, and we would get some negative feedback. And the negative feedback is the stuff you might expect. You know, Omaha Council Bluffs isn't a big enough population base to support a festival. Other people have tried this, and they really haven't been successful. It's going to require a lot of money. And then why would you do this? You're not part of the music scene. And that, that last comment was true. I mean, we weren't part of the music scene. One guy plays, but we were at our core. We were fans. We liked going to shows. We'd been to festivals in other places. And we believed that having a festival right here in Omaha was something the community could support and get excited about. So we, we didn't have demographic information or market studies, but we decided to go ahead. And we were going to start a festival. And so 
first thing you need to do is you need to create an entity or a corporation. And so we named our entity YFC Inc., which is short for Your Festival Committee. Because that's how we viewed ourselves. We were your festival committee. You, the fan. You, the public. You, the community. If we could bring in bands that we wanted to see and hear as part of this whole process, great. All the better. But if we couldn't, that was okay. Because this was about creating an event that the community could get excited about. The other reason for naming ourselves YFC Inc is that it's also an acronym for something we heard repeatedly when we were soliciting feedback from other people. <laughs> and that is we heard, you're effing crazy. <laughs> so we had our name. <laughs> but we had to figure out what kind of festival did we want to have. And we knew that to be the kind of festival that the community could rally around and support, we had to be a nonprofit. There are a few other nonprofit music festivals, but the big ones, the ones that you see and read about, the Coachellas, the Lollapaloozas, they are for-profit events, and they are designed to make as much money as possible for the promoters who take on the risk of booking the bands and paying the expenses. But Maha has never been about profit. It's been about community. We wanted someone to know that when they bought a ticket, or they bought a T-shirt, or they bought a beer, that they weren't putting money into anybody's pocket. We were all volunteers. But instead, that money was going to the event and helping it grow and be more successful each and every year. We also knew that we wanted our festival to be accessible to people. So we've been committed to keeping our ticket price as low as we could possibly afford. And if somebody couldn't afford our lower price ticket, then we wanted them to be able to volunteer so that they wouldn't have to buy a ticket. And then we look for other ways that we could make ourselves even more accessible. And so we would do things like allow people to bring their kids without having to buy a ticket. And we would allow people to leave our festival and go home, take their kids home to the babysitter, or go home and let their dog out because we're all dog lovers at Maha, and come back, which is something that most other festivals don't do. But we do that because our focus has always been outward instead of inward. It's always been about community and, non, and not about profit. Now, we can't go too far with that whole don't make a profit thing, because when we started this, we didn't have any kind of underwriting or grants. We didn't have any sponsors lined up. We've always had to focus on the bottom line. But we remind ourselves that being, we remind ourselves that being a nonprofit, it's our tax status, it's not our business plan. But Maha always, been, always has been and always will be about community. So, I've talked a lot about the why. Why does Maha exist? But let's spend some time on the how. How does Maha function? And it's there that you really get into the heart of my 667. Because over 300, 300 plus of my 667 are made up of the volunteers who work on Maha. I'm not giving this talk to you today, but for the efforts of these 300 plus people. And back in 2009, when we had the first Maha, we didn't have volunteers to draw from. Those of us who kind of started this whole thing going, there were just a few of us. And we couldn't do everything that needed to be done. So we reached out to other community groups that had volunteer bases. And we said, hey, would your volunteers be interested in helping us out? And sure enough, they were. So each year, our number of volunteers has grown. And we went from not having enough volunteers in year one to now having more volunteers than we can take. And we have to turn people away. Our volunteer slots fill up within a couple hours of going live online. This group of people, this community of people that didn't exist seven years ago, they're now connected. They're friends. They go to shows together. They go to other festivals together. They write letters of recommendation for one another. And they do everything to make Maha work. They take tickets. They haul ice. They sort M&Ms backstage for the bands. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. No one sorts M&Ms. But they do pick up cigarette butts out of the grass. It was 2011 at our first year at our new location. It was Sunday. It was the day after the festival. Everybody was dog-tired. There was no adrenaline pumping. It was hot. And there were volunteers picking up cigarette butts by hand out of the grass. They'd met their commitment to us the day before, 
but they came back because there was a little girls' dance recital in the park that afternoon. And these volunteers were so committed to Maha that they didn't want anyone to be able to say anything bad about how Maha had trashed the park and ruined these little girls' dance recital. That's how invested these people are in seeing Maha succeed. And that's why they're a huge, huge part of my 667. The other huge, huge part of my 667 are the sponsors and donors who contribute financially to Maha. Yes, they could buy a general admission ticket, or they could even step up and buy a VIP ticket and say that they had supported the event, and that would absolutely be true. We need as many people as possible to buy tickets. But these people, these sponsors and donors, they do more than that. Some of them contribute financially, you know, larger amounts through a sponsorship, and some of them give us as little as $10 during Omaha Gives. But the fact of the matter is that they all give. They all contribute financially to Maha because they want to see it be bigger and better each and every year. And the reality is, is that Maha is already bigger and better than it should be because of them. Maha's ticket revenue doesn't justify the amount of money that we spend on bands. In fact, we could double the price of our ticket so that then we were more comparable to a for-profit festival, and we still wouldn't generate enough revenue to cover our expenses. But we're able to be bigger than we should be. We're able to overspend on bands because of sponsor and donor support. And it's because of sponsors and donors that Maha is still here in year seven when other festivals have gone away. Since we first started Maha, the Mile High Music Festival in Denver, the 10,000 Lakes Festival in Minnesota, the Can Roxas Festival in Kansas City, and even the Red Sky Music Festival right here in Omaha have all gone away. But Maha remains because of sponsor and donor support. And people are always saying to me, Trey, when is Maha going to grow? Trey, when is Maha going to add that second day? And my answer is always the same. You tell me how many sponsors and donors we can get, and I'll tell you how big Maha can get. So sponsors and donors are another key part of my 667. And you take all the groups that I've talked about so far, you take the founders, you take the organizers, you take the volunteers, you take the sponsors and donors, and you get to my number. You get to my 667. And yet, that's not the full Maha story. Because Maha can't just be about the music. So far this year, we've gotten over 1,200 band suggestions. And we can only book up to 12. We cannot make everybody happy with music. But what we can do is we can try and create a day of show experience that is so fun and engaging that people say, I don't care who's playing Maha, I just want to go. It's good for the community. And so we try and do that. We try and create that day of show experience by bringing in what we kind of jokingly call festivalosity. And that means that we leverage the connections and the relationships within the 667 to access other parts of our community. So we bring in things like OK Comedy Party to have comedy performances at Maha. And we bring in Louder Than a Bomb to have high school slam poets perform at Maha. And then we bring in fun things like Ferris wheels and game trucks. We have free photography booths and low-priced food and drink. And then possibly most importantly, we bring in other nonprofits, more than 20 last year, just like us, to be part of what we call our community village so that they can interact with our fans in fun and unique and interesting ways. And in the process, they can start to develop relationships. And they can tell our fans about the good work that these nonprofits do 365 days a year in our community. And you take all these elements together and you start to get a day of show experience that people look forward to and they plan around. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, Maha is not all rainbows and butterflies. I mean, it's work, and it's hassle, and it's stressful, and every year you think that this is the year it's going to come crashing down. And we get mad at one another, and we leave crappy voicemails for one another, and asking people for money is never fun. But then, when you're standing in the crowd of 7,000 people, and they're all singing along to Death Cab for Cutie, and you know that those 7,000 people haven't come from just Omaha and Council Bluffs and Lincoln, but they've come from 31 other states. All that stress and all that anxiety and all that worry, it all just kind of washes away. 
and you're thankful and you're humbled and you're inspired to dream bigger. So my charge to all of you today as you walk out of this room is to find your number. My number is 667. But your number could be 6 or 67 or 6007. But you have a number. And your number is far greater than you believe it to be. I'm giving this talk today, but this is not just my talk. There are three other founders who should be up here with me. And there are eight other board members who should be up here with me. In fact, there are 666 other people who should be up here with me. This is their talk as well. No one person does Maha. The community does Maha for the benefit of the community. That's the power of community. And that's the opportunity that all of you have as you walk out of here today. Whatever your passion may be, whether it's social justice, or helping the disadvantaged, or reading to a child, or starting a music festival, you can make it happen. You can change the community in which you live. If only you engage, if only you participate, if only you interact. It just takes one. It just takes one person, one connection, one interaction. That one person is you. It just takes one invitation to one meeting at which you know one other person for magic to happen. And I know this to be true. I believe it with all my heart. Because that one person in Leadership Omaha, that one person who suggested that Omaha should have a music festival targeted towards young people, that one person was me. Thank you.